Thank you. All right, guys, uh, let me let me catch back up. I had to, there was some circumstance. There was a circumstance to which I had to attend. Uh, so I just did, and now we're on, we're on again. So, all right, uh, let's keep talking. I think we had last time is, I think I erased the whole thing, which I should not have, but I did. Um, if you got y equals fx, y equals negative fx, y equals 3x plus 5, let's say I, I want to find the inverse function of that. Didn't I say that if I plugged in the number 10 for x, 10 times 3 is 30, plus 5 is 35, that's 35. If I plugged in 35 right here, it should get me back to 10. Inverse functions have that attribute. So let's see what we got here. How do you find the inverse function? Well, I'll tell you what, I just I guess I, I want to break this thing down to x. If I took 3x plus 5, I want to knock it down to just x. Well, let's treat that as a big X. Let's treat that as kind of big X. Well, what would I have to do to it? What do you say you subtract 5 on each side? Well, no, not on each side. Just take this guy right here. Take this guy right here. 3x plus 5. Take this guy right here. 3x plus 5. Subtract 5. You got 3x. Take the 3x and divide by 3, and that'll spit out x. What just happened here? Whatever you got here, treat them as like the new x. So this guy right here is y equals 3x plus 5, but you can treat him like he's x. Then work backwards. The x you call. So wherever, you know, you write it like this. Now, I don't know, guy, I wish we were in person and a lot of stuff would be a lot easier, I guess you could say. Um, with this in mind, what is going on? Well, I'd said they're inverses of each other. See what I did. Let's just do it again. I took y equals 3x plus 5, and I said, why don't you undo that y equals 3x plus 5? Undo it. Well, okay, if I undo the y equals 3x plus 5, I would subtract 5. You know, I take it, I take y equals, pretend nothing's here, guys, just three, pretend just this is here. Let's undo it. Let's undo it. Take y equals 3x plus 5, subtract 5, you got 3x. Take 3x, divide by 3, and you just got back to x. So what just happened here? Well, basically, you're taking the y and you're pretending it's the x. It's a, it's a tough one to kind of call. You're, you're taking this guy and you're manipulating it. And how would you get it? You know, how would you actually solve for the value of what we, you know, what, what would you get? Well, if this guy is to be undone, for any value of x that you had, you subtract 5 divided by 3. You can take y equals 3x plus 5, and the trick they use is this. I said, I'll tell you what. Pretend the y is what's going to be manipulated. So you call that. And I want you to manipulate it in such a way that this guy's all by itself. And that'll be the y value. So just solve for y. You're interchanging range and domain. What would you do here? Well, here, let me solve for y. Wherever you see a y, this is generally the way they, they do inverse functions, you guys. There's a lot you can do here. There's a lot you can do. Uh, but here, you, you know, y equals 3x plus 5. Wherever you see a y, put an x. Wherever you see an x, put a y. Subtract 5 on each side. Divide by 3 on each side. Now 
y equals x minus 5 over 3. These are inverse functions of one another. What does that mean? Inverse functions have the attribute. If the point x comma y exists over here, the point y comma x exists over here. That's an attribute they have. If the point, if the coordinates 10 comma 35 exist here, then 35 comma 10 exists there. Let's try it again. Put a 10 right here, guys. Will it work? Put a 10 right here. 10 right here for x. 10 right here for x. 10 times 3 is 30. Plus 5 is 35. 10, 35. I'm claiming I'm going to get 35 comma 10 right here. Let's do it again. Put it For x, put a 10. For x, put a 10. 10 times 3 is 30, plus 5 is 35, as we said. x is a 10. 10 times 3 is 30, plus 5 is 35. So 10. Uh, put the 35 right here. What's 35 minus 5? 30. Divide by 3, 10. Wait a minute. You do one than the other, you get back to where you started. Let's try it again. If x was equal to 10, 10 right here. 10 times 3 is 30 plus 5 is 35. y equals 35. Put that y equals 35 in place of 10. Uh, put that y equals 35 in place of x. 35 minus 5 is 30. 30 divided by 3 is 10. Gets right back to where you started. I wonder if it works the other way. What if you put the 10 right here? 10 minus 5 is 5. 5 divided by 3 is 5 thirds. Put the 5 thirds right here. 5 over 3 times 3 cancels. You got 5. 5 and 5 is 10. No matter which one you do first, you go back to the other one. Very important. So the way, if ever they give you an inverse function, and whenever they give you a function, y equals 3x plus 5, wherever you see a y, put an x. Wherever you see an x, put a y, and then solve for y. In this case, we found that to be this, this, and this are inverse functions of one another. They're inverse functions of one another. So, Pretty important stuff. Well, there's a very important set of inverse functions known as the exponential and logarithmic functions. Done the right way, the exponential and logarithmic function for the appropriate base under consideration is a general rule. The exponential and logarithmic functions are inverses of one another. So let's see, if they're inverses of one another, let's, let's talk about it a little bit.
Okay, guys. Um, what's this all about? This exponential function I'm going to talk about. Uh, I guess there's an easier way, there, there's, there's easy ways and hard ways to do some of this stuff. Y equals 10 to the x power is the exponential function. And kind of a crazy function. 10 to the 0 is 1. Anything to the 0 is 1. 10 to the negative 1 is 1 10. 10 to the negative 2 is 1 100. 10 to the negative 3 is 1 1000. Well, this goes down this way. Never goes to 0. This is an asymptote again. Kind of like we had with, with the, the, hyper, uh, the hyperbola we've talked about, those asymptotes. And then as you, as you go to the right, this thing takes off upward. This thing rises exponentially. Diseases oftentimes spread exponentially. Um, many things, you know, bacteria growth, et cetera, et cetera, the Petri dish. There's exponential growth there. Economic tendencies, they could, they could maybe say something like this. Uh, this is y equals 10 to the x. This is... Y equals X. Well, man, if I, I told you, this, there's going to be somebody who's a mere reflection of this guy coming down this way. Let me draw the mere reflection. It's going to be the inverse. It's going to be the inverse function of Y equals 10 to the X. It's going to asymptotically go toward negative, neg as it goes to negative infinity. This thing right here, I drew this horribly. Um, Uh, not really badly. I mean, it's, it's just it's just a guide, guys. That's the big thing I kind of look at. But let me we'll try to kind of clean that up a little bit. They are mere reflections of one another. This is the logarithmic function. Log base 10. They put a 10 on the bottom. Um, of x. The logarithmic function tells you what the exponent is for a given value. Again, I want to make this really clear, you guys. When I say to you y equals... 10 to the x, if you put a negative 2 here, 10 to the negative 2 is 0 0.01, or 100. That's 1 over 10 to the 2. You guys know this from our, our discussion of exponent. 10 to the negative 1 is 1 over 10. 10 to the 0 is 10. 10 to the 1 I'm sorry, 10 to the 0 is 1, rather. I'm sorry, 10 to the 1 is 0. 10 to the 1 is 10. 10 to the 2 is 100. Look how fast this thing takes off. 10 to the 3 is 1,000. 10 to the 4 is 10,000. 10 to the 6 is a million. 10 to the 9th is a billion. Just going to 9, you get to a billion. Are you kidding me? If I go this way over to 9, this thing shoots up to the billion mark. It's out of the building. It's zero, it's just one for this guy right here. For this one, zero is just one. For nine, it's a billion. So it really takes off. 10 to the one is just 10. At 10, at one, you're 10. At two, you're 100. At three, you're 1,000. At nine, you're a billion. I didn't even draw this right. It's not even a good scale. But still, this is about the general idea. The logarithmic function goes the other way around. The logarithmic function tells you What is the exponent? Uh, log base 10. Now, you don't, that's just the bookkeeping mark, guys. This 10 right here does not mean 10 to the x. This is just a bookkeeping mark. You're not, going, you're not going 10 to the x right here. 
This is just bookkeeping because somewhere else it might be something different. But this guy right here, everything goes backwards. Here's X, here's Y. If you switched it around, if you had 10 to the negative 2, you got this. 10 to the negative 1, you got this. 1, you got 0. Why? Because 10 to the 0 gets you that. 10 is 1. 10 to the 2, 2. Wait a minute, they're mere reflections of each other. What does the logarithmic function do? The logarithm base 10 of x tells you what the exponent is. Give you an idea. If I wanted the logarithm base 10, sometimes they don't even put a 10 there. It's assumed you're working with base 10. A lot of times with the logarithm. Logarithm base 10 of 100. The logarithm Base 10 of 100, the logarithm of 100, base 10, the logarithm of 100 is that number such that if you were going to, ex the logarithm base 10 of 100 is, the logarithm of 100 is, find me the number, find me the exponent that I would put on top of 10 to get 100. In other words, y equals 10 to the x is the exponential function. If you switch these around, find for me the y that you'd put on top of 10 to get x. I want to get 100. What number would you put here? How about 2? The logarithm of 100 is 2. What is the exponent? on top of 10, that would give you 100. Logarithm is a fancy word for find the exponent that you'd put on top of something. What would you put on top of 10 to get 100 as an exponent? As an exponent, what would you put on top of 10 to get 100? 10 to what number would give me 100? That number is, is that. Logarithm base 10 of 1, well, wait a minute. Maybe there's an easier way to do this. Here, for example, logarithm base 10, isn't 100 the same as 10 to the 2? What is the exponent? What is the exponent of 10 having 2 as an exponent? It's kind of a trivial question. It's like saying who's buried in General Grant's tomb, who fought the guy who fought in the Civil War? Who's buried in General Grant's tomb? General Grant. You know, what is the exponent of 10 to the 2? Is one is one the same as ten to the zero? Sure is. What's the exponent of ten to the zero? It's zero. So logarithm one is zero. What's the logarithm base ten of point zero 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 one? I think it's a trick question, huh? The logarithm base ten. Of this, isn't this tenths, hundredths, thousands, ten thousands? This isn't this tenths, thousands, tenths, tenths, hundredths, thousands, ten thousands. Tenths, hundredths, thousands, ten thousands. One over ten thousand. Isn't that the same as 1 over 10 to the 4th? Yeah. Isn't that the same as 10 to the negative 4? What is the exponent of 10 having negative 4 as an exponent? Negative 4. So you got to be careful. Decimals. Small decimals, negative exponents are associated with them. Negative value for the logarithm. One has zero associated with it. Big numbers have positive numbers associated with their exponents. Their logarithms are positive numbers, et cetera, et cetera.
So that's some of what goes on here, guys. Longer than just a fan, longer than just a fancy word for exponent. And look how they look. You know, look, look how it looks. If you were, it's it's practically identical. I'm trying to argue this to try to give you a decent argument here, guys. Um, Okay, let me see what I can say here, guys, really quickly. You leave that up there a bit. All right, guys, let me see what I can say here. That right there that you just saw, 10 to the x, longer than base 10. If they were writing it like this, y equals something else. Let's say y equals 3 to the x. Uh, or y equals 2 to the x. Or y equals whatever to the x. Okay? Let's stay with 2 to the x for now. y equals 2 to the x, and y equals the logarithm base 2 of x. These right here would look, you got to be careful here. This general look always occurs with the exponential function and logarithmic function, respectively. These two, I, Exponential, exponential functions tend to look like this, regardless of the base. Exponen exponential functions, exponential functions tend to look like this, regardless of the base. And logarithmic functions tend to look like this, regardless of the base. Same thing here. If you graph these two, they'd have that same general look like that. It wouldn't be the same graph. It'd be, it'd be a different graph. Don't get that wrong. They'd be different graphs, but they'd have that general look. The exponential function would look like this somewhat, and very somewhat it would look like this. Very much, it would, very much every exponential function tends to look like this, and very much every logarithmic function tends to look like this for our purposes as we discuss this. What's so interesting about this? Well, put a three right here. Let's say x was equal to three. 2 to the 3 is 8. If you put the 8 right here, it's going to spit back a 2 right at you. Put an 8 right here. I'm saying it's going to spit back a 2. I'll prove it to you. Isn't 8, isn't eight the same as 2 to the 3rd? The logarithm, base 2 of 2 to the 3rd, is 3. Bam, comes right back to where it started. There's a lot more to this, guys, and I'm kind of debating with myself how far to take it with you. But, and maybe I, I think when we, the next time we get together, when I do this again tomorrow, uh, maybe dig a little deeper when we're doing some of this stuff. Can we at least just get some of the theory out of the way, and then we can knock out the problems. But um, some very interesting things that go on. Um, let's see what else we can say. I guess you can kind of look at the behavior of things and kind of figure out what's going on here. I mean, let's put it this way. You guys all agree that 8 to the 0 is equal to 1. And 8 to the 1 is equal to 8. What do you think 8 to the 2 thirds would be? My gut tells me it'd be, it'd be between 
if eight to the, if anything to the zero is one, and anything to the one is itself, everybody agrees that zero is smaller than two thirds, and at the same time, one is bigger than two thirds. Eight to the two thirds is is an answer that's going to be bigger than one but smaller than eight. That's pretty interesting in its own right. Let's go. Let's take 8 to the 2 and take the whole thing to the 1 third. What does that mean? That means 8 to the 2 to the 1 third, that means the cube root. 8, I'm sorry, 8 squared, better. 8 squared, the whole thing to the 1 third. Uh, what is this? 64. What's the cube root of 64? 4. You should have done that another way. You know you could have. You could have put the one third right here and then squared. You could have done the cube root of eight first, get an answer, and then square it. What's the cube root of eight? Two squared is, guys, I'm getting four either way. Well, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to sound like a jerk or anything, but yeah, four sure between one and eight, isn't it? Eight to the two third eight to the two thirds is four. Okay. So if y was equal to eight to the x and the corresponding ex uh, that's the exponential function, the, and the corresponding logarithmic function is this. It's not eight to the x. This is just a book key. A bookmark, right? Yeah, guys, it's just logarithm right here. That's just a bookmark. What is the logarithm base eight of the number four? Want to bet it's two thirds? The answer has to be the exponent that you would put on top of eight to get the logarithm of the number whose logarithm you're asking for in plain English. If that's the answer, 8y should give you x. 8 to the 2 thirds should give you 4. Well, we already proved that 8 to the 2 thirds gives you 4. Didn't we say didn't we say that 4 was 8 to the 2 thirds? What is the exponent base 8? What's the exponent base 8 of eight having two thirds as an exponent, two thirds. There's more to this, guys. There's more to this. I'll probably get into this tomorrow more when we're knocking out some of these problems. Uh, right now, let me try to give you a little more, a, a strong basis in the bread and butter of what's going on with this stuff. Uh, so we feel okay about it. We feel halfway decent about it. Um, so that's that. Well, there's a real, there's a real famous number that gets used a lot in mathematics, and that's the number e. It's the base of the natural logarithm. Uh, it is an extremely important number, extremely useful number, and it answers a lot of questions. So let's see what we can say here, guys. So you got this. Um, I said that there's a lot of identical looking to this thing. Let's talk a little bit. Like I said, tomorrow we can probably clean up on a lot of the loose edges that we got on this stuff, you guys. We'll try to take it from there. I think we'll be okay. Okay, I just erased something I did not want to erase. I haven't thrown away too many markers today, have I? All right, let's see. Maybe I'm due. I 
Ja mä oon kestä. I'm about to throw this one out some time ago. Luckily I didn't. All right. So, we've said quite a bit. Forgive me, guys, I have to step out again. Here. Sorry about that, guys. All right. Um, what do you want to say, guys? There's a very important number, fascinating number. Some beautiful mathematics goes into proving what it is. Um, when they do calculus to talk about the logarithmic function, um, they, they kind of... There, there's a number of things that are, that are of great interest. They, 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 it becomes a calculus problem where they say, well, I don't want to, I'm, I'm not going to get into it too much, but they, they do some pretty fascinating mathematics in calculus to talk about this number E. Um, and it becomes very useful when you're dealing with certain things. This number E is exactly given by the summation from i equals 1, i not being the square root of negative 1, just being some index of summation. Summation from i equals 1 to uh, infinity, actually, uh, n as n goes to infinity, um, to n. Well, I don't know how to, the best way to write this, so let me just write it. This of... One over one over n factorial. So I'm all over the place on this one, guys. Forgive me. Um, you don't really have to know what I'm saying right here. Is factorials are interesting. N factorial means n times n minus one times n minus two dot 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 all the way down to one. If I were saying to you five factorial, five factorial is five times four times three times two times one. Uh, one factorial is one. Zero factorial, they define to be one also. This thing right here is one plus one over one factorial. You put the zero here, zero factorial is one. One over zero factorial is one over one. They define zero factorial to be equal to one. One over zero factorial, zero factorial is one. One over zero factorial is one over one, that's one. One over one factorial is another one. 1 over 2 factorial is 1 over 2 times 2. 1 over 3 factorial is 1 over 3 times 2 times 1. 
1 over 4 factorial is 1, is one over 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 plus dot dot dot. This thing is approximately equal to, I'm going to look at it on my calculator too, just in case. I, it should be 2.718281828, roughly speaking. This number goes on forever. It's important enough that I want to talk about it. Um, important enough to talk about it, yet I can't find it. Here it is. Okay, here we go. Two point seven one eight two eight one eight. Uh, so this thing's kind of interesting, but it doesn't repeat. I got to kind of make that very clear. Uh, two point seven. Two point seven. Two point seven one. Two point seven one eight. Two point seven one eight two eight one eight. 2.8. So it goes 2.7, then it goes 1.828, 1.828, and a whole bunch of other stuff. It is not exact. This goes on forever. This goes on forever. It does not repeat. It's an irrational number like pi is. I think it's called a transcendental number also because you can't, you get, you don't get, it's not the solution of, uh, I think it's, it's not the solution of any polynomial. It, 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 it's, its root is not found. You, you can't really say it's a solution of something either. Like, like the square root of 2 is an irrational number. Square root of 2 is an irrational number, but it does have, it can be found. In, in other words, it is the solution of some kind of polynomial. This is not the solution of a polynomial. Uh, but this is approximately what it is. About 2.712. About... 2.712, a better approximation is 2.7, 2 2.7, Uh Amazing number. How they prove it, it's like the limit, you know, they, they we don't want to go there, if I think, and I don't know if I should be going here right now, but if you took the number one plus one over t to the t power, and you took the limit, they say limb, Lim as t goes to infinity. You think that's odd, man, because as t goes to infinity, one over t gets really small. Yeah, I know, but t right here gets really big. At the end of all that, the limit as it goes to infinity is equal to that special number e. It's fascinating. It's really fascinating. It's application how you can use it, um, really, really interesting stuff, you guys. How this, how this stuff can get used, uh, I'm just trying to think here for a second, something else I could say about it uh, of great interest associated with it. Um, no, I mean, that's about all I'd wanna say right now, I think, guys, to be honest with you, because there's a lot more, in another class, and if we were meeting face-to-face, -face, guys, man, there's a whole lot we could say. There's a whole lot of beautiful stuff we could say about this. Uh, but but this, is, this is where it's coming from. So this E is the base of the natural logarithms. The logarithm... Uh, let's try to kind of jump the gun on that one, guys. The logarithm base E, not base 10, not base 8, base E, the logarithm base e of x, it's not e to the x. It's just, this is a bookkeeping thing here, right? The logarithm base e to the x, log base e, log of x base e, they write it like this, ln of x, logarithmus naturalis. It's Latin, beautiful Latin word, uh, beautiful Latin language. Logarithmus naturalis of x. Logarithmus naturalis means the natural logarithm. Logarithm natural. Logarithmus naturalis. Okay. Um, so that's that's of interest. Let's let me just having said that. I mean, some of the back. 
uh, you know, some of this background, I don't, you know, it's arguable how far I want to go with some of this background, but I thought, I think for your personal enrichment, it's good that we go there. It's good that we go there a little bit. Um, let's see what we got. It is fascinating how this number operates, how it works, what you can do with it, this base of the natural logarithm. You say, what are you talking about? It's a bizarre number in its own right. It's, you know, one over zero factorial plus one over one factorial plus one over two factorial plus one over three factorial plus dot, dot, dot goes on to infinity. How on earth are you going to make heads and tails out of that thing? Believe it or not, you can. Uh, there, there's stuff that goes on. There's stuff that can be done. Uh, when you're trying to, when, you, when you're manipulating what's happening there, you guys, uh, just some really fascinating stuff. You look at it, even having looked at it so many times myself, man, every time you look at it, it's just, it's really fascinating. Really fascinating mathematics that go, that goes into it. Um, so what's, you know, is there a moral to all this story, I guess you could say? Well, I've kind of already already foreshadowed the ending of how you look at some of this stuff. You could just as easily, you know, just like these two guys are inverses of one another. 10 to the X and Y equals log of X You got this right here. And this is analogous to y equals e to the x and y equals logarithm base e of x. And I already said that means ln x. They write it like that. It's a special way of writing that. So this is going to be y equals ln of x. These are inverses. If I put a number in here, guys, this is, I, I, I can't emphasize this stuff enough. You name the real number. Right? There's probably a lot of ways we can interpret this. There's a lot of what ifs. There's a lot of even more general statements we can make. Let's, if we start doing too much of that, we're not able to see the forest because of too many trees that we put in there. I want us to see the forest and all the trees as much as we can. And then later on, slowly we can pick up more stuff as we need to. We, nobody knows everything. We just want to know some stuff right now, a good amount of stuff right now, we're good. If I take any real number x, anything, I don't mean just 2 or 3 or 4 or negative 1 or negative 2 or negative 3 or negative 4. I mean even the number pi. Hell, if you want, put the number e in here if you want. 10 to the e. 10 to the e power. 10 to the e squared power, whatever e squared is. 2.72 squared, whatever it is, put it in there or close to that. Put it in there for x. Put any real number x that you want right here. Put any real number x that you want right here. Go 10 to the x, you get a y. Whatever value of y you got, if you put that value of y right here, the logarithm base 10 of that will get you back to the original number you put in there. The number you'll get right here is the number that you originally, if I put, for example, if I put uh, the square root of 3 right here, 10 to the square root of 3 is some number. That some number put right here, the logarithm of 10 to the square root of 3 is square root of 3. The other side, if you put square root of 3 right here, get the logarithm, you get an answer. Take that answer, put it right here, go 10 to that answer, you get back to the square root of 3. You do one to the other, you get back to where you started. <laughs> I got to talk, we got we to talk about that a bit. Um, if you took this right here, based on what I, and I already said this, I already said this with, all, with other I already said this with other bases that were involved, you guys. So why would you think it'd be anything different? Here's your axis of symmetry, y equals x. 
This is y equals e to the x. This is y equals logarithm base e of x, also known as logarithmus naturalis of x. You'll say to me, yeah, Jim, they look identical. Yeah, they do. They are identical, they are identical in shape, in form. The numbers are different. But this is the basic look that you're always going to see. I said that earlier. I said that a while ago. I think I said that before the break. And then we, we're merging this video with that, with this right now. But we already said that. Uh, so there you go. You got this. Okay, more, more to come on this. Well, I, I just, I, I've already kind of been foreshadowing other things as well, and let's, let's kind of talk. Are you telling me it's a lot to say, and I guess we'll say it, and we'll, then we'll, we'll move around a little bit and, and answer some things, I guess you could say. Um, do you guys remember? Let's start with X again. Let's just start with X. If you start with X, and you take X, let's start with X, and then exponentiate. Put X on top of 10 as an exponent. I got 10 to the X. Then, if I take the logarithm of 10, if I take the logarithm of, forgive me, if I take the logarithm of 10 to the X, base 10, this is just a bookkeeping thing. Get rid of it if it's an issue for you. If I take the logarithm of 10 to the X, base 10, I get X. If I take the logarithm base 10, if I take the logarithm base 10 of 10 to the x, the logarithm of 10 to the x, dealing with base 10 here, logarithm base 10 of 10 to the x is, what is the exponent of 10 having x as an exponent? It's x. It's x. Let's start another way. Let's start at x and get the logarithm first. Let me find the exponent of x. What is the exponent of x? Here's x, let me find its exponent, and then let me put that exponent on top of 10, this guy being an exponent. 10 taken to the exponent of x is x. If you get the logarithm of something and then put it on top of 10 in this case as an exponent, you get x. Let's see if there's a moral to the story here on this stuff, guys. How does this work? Works like this. If you start with something, and then you exponentiate, and then you take the logarithm of the exponentiation, you get back to where you started. If you start with something, and then find its exponent, and then take that exponent of the thing, and put it on top of 10 in this case, you get back to where you started. If you take something, exponentiate, then get the logarithm, you get back to where you started. If you get the logarithm of something and then exponentiate, you get back to where you started. Immensely important. If you do one then the other, you get back to where you started. Well, I've been saying that. I've been saying that quite a while. So, very important, very important. Uh, the identical argument here would be, let's say you were taken, you start with x, you exponentiate, and then you get the logarithm. In fact, we started. What do you say you start with x, find the exponent of x, and then put that exponent on top of E. Get back to where you started. If you do one and then the other, you get back to where you started. This is actually a good way to solve problems. If they give you exponents, 
take logarithms on each side and you get rid of the exponents and everything's down to earth. If there are exponents going on on each side, take logarithms on each side to get rid of the exponents. If there are logarithms going on each side, then exponentiate each side to get rid of the logarithms. Say that again. When you have an equation and there are exponents involved, take the logarithm on each side and you get rid of the exponents. If you have an equation and there are logarithms involved, exponentiate each side to get rid of the logarithms. A little technique. And this is because of this reality that we're explaining right here, you guys. There's a lot here. Again, guys, you're looking at it. I'm throwing a whole 16-week semester at you guys within a matter of days. Given, at the time that I'm writing this, given the, uh, given the health crisis that has hit the world. Okay? So it's looking pretty good that way. There's some other stuff I'd, I'd like to say here. Okay, we said this, we said this stuff, and you know we'll, we'll be utilizing this quite a bit. We solved some equations live, some problems live related to something like this, and we'll take it from there. All right, well, let's see, given what we've said, we'll sort of repeat a little bit of what we said, and we'll kind of, we'll, we'll, we'll see if there's some, uh, some, some tricks of the trade that we can put into this thing uh, and make some sense out of it. So let's see what we can, uh, let's see what we can do about it. Alright guys, um, what we can say here, Well, we said a bunch, and uh, forgive me for erasing all over the place. It's hard to write on this thing, guys. This this cleaning fluid is amazing, but if it's if it's still on there, it's not gonna let me write anything. Um, we gotta talk a bit. Let me let me try to get you. 
I'm trying to get you somewhere that I think uh, will, will help us out here a bit. We already said something. I mean, so let's, uh, we, we said it, we can say it again, whatever. Um, we said if you start at x and you go 10 to the x, if you get the logarithm, base 10 of 10 to the x, you get x. If you take, um, you start at x and go logarithm base 10 first and then exponentiate, you still get back to x. Okay, we said that. Um, in an analogous fashion, this works with any base. Let's use the famous base e. e to the x log base e, right? Log base e, which is equal to let's see what we got here. Log base e, which so e to the x, then get the log base e of that. That's x. You go ln x first and then go to the e power, you still get x. In general, regardless of the base, ladies and gentlemen, if the base is b, if, if the base is b, let's start with let's start with x right here. And you go b to the x, then go logarithm, base b. That's just a bookkeeping thing. Logarithm base b. What is the exponent that you would put on? Here's what it's saying. Log base b means tell me the exponent that you would put on top of b to get b to the x. X. Who's buried in Grant's tomb? Grant. What is the exponent that you would put on top of b to get b to the x? That's what log base b means. Log base b means tell me the exponent that you would put on top of b to get b to the x. How about x? b to the x is b to the x. So all these mean the same thing, guys. Just depends on the base you're using. If you go use log, find me the exponent of x, base b. When you found the exponent of x, base b, you put that exponent on top of b, of course it's going to give you x. If you do one and the other, you get back to where you started. This is real useful. I mean, the exponential function is immensely useful throughout mathematics and throughout physics and throughout chemistry, throughout a lot of stuff. So you got something right there. You can, you can change from bases and other things too. Now, I want to just let me try, try to give you a simple look at some, some formulas here, guys. If I were to say to you, just trying to think here of a good thing to say, if x was equal to 100,000, is 100,000 equal to 10 to the fifth power? If y is equal to 100, is that 10 to the second power? Got to ask you some questions, guys. There are some formulas that generally are true, and I'll, I'll try to figure that one for you as well. Um, I'll say this. I hope you feel okay about it. Let's say logarithm base 10. Let's call it logarithm. Logarithm of x comma y is the logarithm of x plus the logarithm of y. The logarithm of x divided by y is the logarithm of x minus the logarithm of y. And the logarithm of something to an exponent is the exponent times the logarithm of that. Now, I'm going to get into this with you in a little bit. I just want to say it, though. Um, there's a lot here. Fascinating stuff, guys. It means something, and it does not mean other things. 
Remember what we said? Remember the do's and don'ts that we've always talked about? In the short time that we've kind of been together on these videos and stuff? There's do's and don'ts. Well, keep that in mind. That's log base 10. I didn't put the 10 underneath there. I could, I could do it, I could not do it, it doesn't matter. In an analogous fashion, the same exact thing happens with the natural logarithm. Natural logarithm of a product is the sum of the individual logarithms, just, just like what happened right here. Natural logarithm of a quotient is the difference of the logarithms. And natural logarithm of an exponentiation taking place is the exponent. The, ex, the natural logarithm of an exponentiated quantity is the exponent times the natural logarithm. So we got that. If they look very much alike, they're supposed to look very much alike. They all behave the same way. The only thing difference here is the base, the base under consideration. They all mean they look at it. The logarithm of a product is the sum of the individual logarithms. The logarithm of a quotient is the difference between the two logarithms. The logarithm of something exponentiated is the exponent times the logarithm of the something. That's exactly the same thing here. Logarithm of a product is the sum of the logarithms. The logarithm of the quotient is the difference between the logarithms. The logarithm of something exponentiated is the exponent times the logarithm. If the base is arbitrary, ladies and gentlemen, logarithm base b of x times y, that's the logarithm base b of x plus the logarithm base b of y. Wow, it looks identical to the other one. I told you it'd be identical. The logarithm base b of x over y is the logarithm base b of x minus the logarithm base b of y. The logarithm base b of x to the n is n times the logarithm is n times the logarithm, right? So let me n times logarithm base b of x. You're not going b to the x. That b is just bookkeeping. Not b to the x in there. It's just x. It's just x, etc. for all those. Okay, watch out, okay? That's why I purposely didn't put the 10 right here. There's no, you're not going 10 to the x. It's just x. Okay, these are laws of logarithms. These laws of logarithms hold both ways. If I say to you, my name is Jim, and my name in Greek is Dimitri, then when they point to the guy named Dimitri, me, I'll say my name in English, I call myself Jim. Doesn't really translate, but okay. Jim, this guy Jim is Dimitri. Dimitri is Jim. These work both ways, guys. If it's together, you can break it up like this. If it's broken up like this, you can put it back together like that. If something's together, you can break it up like this. If it's broken up, you can do the right math and get back to here. If it's together, write it like this. It's like that, you can write it together. If it's like this, you can break it up and get this. If it's broken up like this, if you do the right math, you can put it back together. And that's for all of these. They all look the same. It's the same basic look. What's the same basic look? The logarithm of a, the logarithm of a product is the sum of the individual logarithms. The logarithm of a quotient is the difference between the individual logarithms. The logarithm of something exponentiated is the exponent times the logarithm of the something that was previously being exponentiated. What does that mean? Well, I just said what it means. You can go this way. Yeah, but you can also go that way. If it's together, you can break it up. If it's broken up, you can put it together. Together, break it up. Broken up, put it together, etc. For all of these. It helps us to do some of the stuff they're asking us to do. Let me demonstrate, I can't, you know, let me, I can't really demonstrate generally for all of them. Um, but we can say a lot.
which the camera was on the garbage can, guys. I'm nailing bank shots, you can't believe, all right? Um, the B is just a placeholder. The thing on the bottom of any logarithm is just a placeholder. It's not B to the X to the N, no. It's just this guy. Forget him, he's just a placeholder. I don't like, I like writing them small, I, I prefer not to write them at all. The B is just a placeholder. X to the N is what you're getting. You're not going B to the X times Y. It's just X times Y. Not him, not him. You know, it's, pretend he's not there in a sense. I don't know, I wish I, you gotta put it there, you gotta know it's base B, it has nothing to do with these guys though. He's just a placeholder. This way, for all of these. Okay, I emphasize that. Wish I knew, yeah, I'll get that. I wish you guys would be nice if we were together, guys, talking about this stuff. All right. I'm going to show you that this stuff is true. Let's, I'm going to show you this is true. Let's do it for the special case of base 10, of logarithm base 10. So, to do that with logarithm base 10, Guess I gotta ask you some questions here, guys. I mean, we said this is true. This is log base 10. Let me make that 10 as small as possible. I just, you, you've seen me throw my fit on that whole thing. I'm, they're claiming this, what's that gonna be? It's gonna be log base 10 of x plus log base 10 of y. Now I'm making that claim. Don't know if it's true. Well, let's see here. Is x equal to 100,000? Yeah, I propose that it is. Is y equal to 100? So, so 10 is equal, uh, I'm sorry, uh, x is equal to 100,000, which is 10 to the fifth. y is equal to 100, which is 10 to the second. Um, let's go. Here's x, 10 to the fifth. Here's y. Okay, I'd like to find out what the heck that is. Uh, I'll tell you what, when you multiply exponentiated quantities, you add the exponents on top if you have the same base. You have the same base. 10 to the 10 to the fifth, so let's see what we got here. Um, 10 to the fifth, 10 to the second. I uh, got the base 10, five plus two, and we'll find the logarithm base 10. Right, it's, it's basically guys, 100,000 times 100, which is 10 million. 10 million is 10 to the seventh, seven zeros. Yeah, okay, 10 to, yeah. 100,000 times 100 is, 100,000 times, 100,000 times 100 is 10 million. 10 million is 10, is, is 10 to the seventh. Well, I already know that now, it says they added them. What is the exponent, base 10, of 10 having seven as an exponent? Seven. Seven. Yeah. I'd like to know if this works. Over here. And when we got this, is it true here? Well, let's see what we got. We got, let's try these guys. Let's try him and him. It's, hopefully it's seven. Uh, log base 10 of 100,000. It's 10 to the fifth. Log base 10 of 100. That's 10 to the 2. You know where this is going. What's the, ex, what's the exponent? What is the exponent base 10 of 10 having 5 as an exponent? How about 5? How about 5? I'll write it down here so they're right, right above each other. 
What is the exponent base? What is the exponent of base ten of ten having two as an exponent? What's the exponent of ten to the two? It's two. Five and two is seven. Yeah. I'm not trying to be a jerk, guys. Seven equals seven. This is a gut feeling, a gut feeling look, a gut feeling confirmation that the logarithm of a product is the sum of the logarithms. The logarithm, the logarithm of a product, the logarithm of the product is equal to the sum of the individual logarithms. The logarithm of a product is the sum of the individual logarithms. Okay. So that confirms that one. You know, at least gut feeling confirmation. The logarithm of a product, the logarithm of a product is the sum of the individual logarithms. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be this one. That's the whole thing all across the board. Number one, all the way across the board, right? Um, let's go here. The logarithm of a quotient is the difference between the logarithms. See if that works. Those of you into see, you know, when we're doing again, this has applications in physics, engineering, chemistry. Uh, you name it. Uh, in physics, when you're getting into decibels and stuff like that, and other things, electrical circuits, the, the logarithmic and exponential functions play a big role. When you talk about decibels, decibels are the logarithm of something. The definition of the decibel involves taking the logarithm. Hey, we're doing, we're doing logarithms, too. So uh, it's a dynamic process, you guys. Definitely a dynamic process. Let's see what we got. Logarithm base B of x over y, the base b now is 10. So what am I doing? I mean, again, I, I want to have, I make that 10 as small as you can and don't associate them with being in here. I know how many people I've seen throughout the years go 10 to this. Oh, he put a 10 here, x over y, it must be 10 to the x over y. No, this is just a bookkeeping thing. It's just a 10 right there telling you what base you're dealing with. This is all you're dealing with. This guy might as well not even be there if you know it's a 10. Okay, watch out. Watch out. Okay? We're claiming this. Just the bookkeeping right here. It's not 10, it's not 10 to the x. It's just x. It's just x, not 10 to the x. Logarithm base 10 of x. The claim they're making, I guess. Well, what's 100,000? That's x. 100,000 is 10 to the fifth. One hundred thousand one you know, so let's let's time out for a second. Yeah, it's the same stuff up here, guys. X is one hundred thousand, that's ten to the fifth. Y is one hundred, that's ten to the second. Subtract. Wow, it all comes back to us, doesn't it, guys? Uh, that's 5 minus 2 is 3. What is the exponent with base 10 under consideration? Not exponentiating here. It's already here. But not exponentiating. It just happens to be wrote it this way. 
What is the exponent? What is the exponent base 10 of 10 to the third? What exponent would you put on top of 10 to get 10 to the third? How about three? That ends the story. I wonder, do these come out to that? Let's go right with these guys. Log base 10, log base 10 of x, x is 100,000, minus log base 10 of y, that's 100. 100,000 is 10 to the fifth, what? One, 100,000, 100,000 is 10 to the fifth, 100 is 10 to the second. What is the exponent, base 10 of 10 having five as an exponent? What is the exponent, base 10 of 10 having two as an exponent? What's five minus two? Three, three, that looks awfully familiar. I got it here too. That confirms all the, all the second one. The first one confirmed the entire first row, or at least gave us a gut feeling for the entire first row. You can't prove everything. I mean, there's stuff you can do. We're not going there. We're not going there. Some beautiful mathematics out there, guys. There really is. The first situation that we did, the very, very first situation when I started this, confirmed row one. Specifically right here, but in general, row one. Gave us a gut feeling for row one. The second thing gives us a gut feeling for row two. Specifically, I was using something along the lines of this. That's all it is. Okay, we gotta talk. Let's see, raise some and talk more. All right, now what? Well, first things first, I guess. Let's put uh, what x equals 100,000. Uh, let's make that 10 to the fifth. How's that? Let's put n is equal to 3 for the heck of it. Let's say that the logarithm base 10 of x to the n is n times the logarithm base 10 of x. And we said that's generally going to hit, hit the, the, whole, the whole third row down there. We agree that x is 100,000, which is 10 to the fifth. Uh, 10 to the fifth is 100,000. n is equal to 3. Uh, I'd like to see what's going on here. Well, if you exponentiate an exponentiated quantity, you're multiplying exponents. Five times three, The logarithm of 10 to the fifth, the logarithm, the logarithm base 10 of 10 to the, I'm sorry, the logarithm base 10 of 10 to the 15th is 15. Now I'm just wondering, is it gonna, that's, that's what this was. I'm wondering, this is gonna kind of spit out the same thing. N is three, is it gonna be? Three is three. What is the logarithm base 10 of 10 to the fifth? It's five. 
3 times 5 is 15. 15 equals 15. The third row is gut feeling confirmed. There's a gut feeling confirmation on the third row as well. Oh, that stuff's all working out. Okay? Regardless of the base, I mean, the base here could be log base, it could be log base 10, it could be log base B in general, it could be log base 3, log base 8, log base E, which is logarithmus naturalis. It doesn't matter. So that's interesting. These are true. Kind of, and they work both ways. If it's together, you can break it up. If it's broken up, you can put it back together. And they're going to ask you to do that. And you can see that in the stuff that I posted for you. So it should be okay. Um, So not too bad. All right, what's, okay, what's the big deal? Well, I said a lot of stuff, guys. Let me, let me take one of these, one of these columns, and you know that the rows all look alike, okay? The rows all look alike. So if I show you, if I show you for one of these, you know that in general, it's, that's, that's the way it is. We talked about log of x times y, is log of x plus log of y. True. We talked about log of x divided by y is log of x minus the log of y. And we talked about log of x to the n is n times the log of x. Okay, guys, we've been there. We've done it. True. This is true. Look, I, I didn't even put I didn't even put a base here. Usually when they don't put a base there, it means base 10. But it could be some other base. It could be base 3. It could be base E. It could be base square root of 9. Well, that'd be base square root of 3. Uh, that'd be base 3. But it could be base square root of 2. It could be base pi. Uh, it could be base E, the logarithmus naturalis that we talked about. Could be all that. This is true. Okay, I, I, I think it's believable that it's true based on stuff that we've done. It's believable. Believable that it's true. Yeah, this is true. This, let's talk about do's and don'ts. These are all do's. These are all do's. Do all this. Do all this. These are all do's. Do all this. This, however, does this is true. This is true. This does not mean this. Generally speaking, it does not mean this. Hey, Malus, I said you can add. You know, Malus, you said you could add. Yeah, I did say you could add. You add the logarithms, not the logarithm of the sum. Don't do that. Uh you know, don't do this. Hey, Malus, this is multiplication stuff. I mean, maybe there's, is there a connection here? It must be, you know, must be this. I never said that. There is mathematical reality that talks about this. There is mathematical reality that talks about this. 
Generally, it's not that. There is mathematical reality that talks about this right-hand side can be talked about. It just ain't that generally. This mathematical reality exists and is talked about. It just generally is not that. So watch out. Don't do it. A lot of don'ts here. Don't do this. Oh, I know you said it's a difference of two logarithms. Yeah, I did say that. I didn't say it's the logarithm of the difference. I never said that. I also never said this. Oh, well, it must be the, the quotient of two logarithms. Nobody ever said that. This is a mathematical reality that does have expression. This is also a mathematical reality that has expression. So is this. A mathematical reality that has expression, it's just not that. This is also a mathematical reality that has expression. It's just not that. Okay, so look, look out. When I say do, the do here is true. This do, these do's are true. These don'ts are really don'ts. Don't do it, yeah. Okay? So we talk about stuff like that, you guys, in this whole process. Looking good. Um, there is there's something interesting uh, that, that we can put on there as well. There's something, they, they talk about exponential growth and stuff like that and things of that nature. Um, and again, the, the way this gets described sometimes is not the best. Um, and that's not, that's not a slam on the people who did it. I mean, they did hundreds and hundreds of problems here. On occasion, something's going to fall short. I'm obviously going to fall short oftentimes. It's going to happen to anybody. So uh, that having been said, some, some of the examples that can be given here, uh, sometimes people get a little careless in how they write some of the stuff here. Uh, I think it ha it's happened maybe on some of these as well. Uh, but let me just say this for this. Um, There is, um, let me just see, let me look at it actually. Like I said, we'll do, we'll do some of these problems next time we get together as well and try to get an idea of what's happening there. There is a way to find the logarithm of something that's at a different base. And that's, that's pretty fascinating stuff. So we can get into that a little bit too. Um, let me... Exactly how I want to do that, actually. Let me erase probably a good amount of stuff. Like I said, I'm always forgetting you guys have the you guys have the reverse button that you don't, normally don't have. I guess that's the one redeeming aspect of the whole thing. I'd still rather be seeing you guys in person, that's for sure. Um,
All right, guys, there's a lot you could say here. Um, on one of these things, I was, I was kind of looking at it. I'm going to have to look at it a little more closely. Um, there's, you can find the logarithm of something in another base if you know the logarithm in, 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 in some other base. So there's, there's a lot here. I mean, this is, I'm, I'm kind of doing this cold, so kind of be patient with me, but it should, be, it should go pretty smoothly. Um, if there is, uh, let me think. I think exactly how I want to say this. Um, I'll say that X is equal to, I'll say Y rather. Um, I think exactly what I want to say, guys. Like I said, I'm doing this kind of cold, but I think I think it's important that I, that I at least try to do it. I'm not looking at it from the book. Um, you can convert and find logarithms. You can relate the logarithms of different bases to one another. It's pretty easy to do. I just got to try and try and get the right the right notation in there. I guess you could say you could have a, a base a to the x power. And it's equal to a base B to the Y power. Now, A and B are the same. X and Y are the same. B to the X, uh, you know, uh, B to the X equals B to the X, you know, whatever. If A and B are equal, then X and Y are equal. But if they're not, then you got this. All right. Um, so we can say a lot of stuff here, guys, how you would actually do this. You could say that. I could write a number of things here. I just want, I want to make sure it, it's not going to, it's probably not going to look like the letters they have on there. Depends what book you look at as well. But if this is the case, if you're going to say there is, there's a quantity, there's some quantity A, capital A, there's some quantity, yeah, capital A, let's say, that's equal to A to the X equal to B to the Y. I think there's an easy way to do this is A is A equal to uh, the logarithm, the logarithm of A, base B, the whole thing to the B power. So, yeah, that's, that, that would kind of do it. That, that would handle the whole thing. So this, this is very interesting. I mean, it's, it's, I wish, again, how many times have you heard me say, I wish you guys were here. I wish we were talking face to face on this whole matter, you guys. Um, that's true. Yeah, I think it's, it's true. Here's why. If you were to take A, if you were to, if you were to take A and find its logarithm, base B, its exponent to the base B, and put the logarithm of A, find the logarithm of A, base B, in other words, the exponent of A, base B, that you would put on top of B, you know, what is the logarithm, you know, here's A, the log, here's A, here's A, the logarithm, the, the logarithm of A, the logarithm of A, base B, is the exponent of A that you would put on top of B to get A. Well, that's true. That means AX to the BY. Uh, if A is all this, then you got B to the logarithm of B uh, logarithm of A, base B, the whole thing to the X. Um, 
Let's try to figure out what we want to say here, guys, uh, exactly on this. Let me call, let me call this quantity, which is equal to that quantity, let's call it capital A. Capital A is some number equal to A to the X. Capital A is some number equal to small a to the X, which is equal to small b to the Y, because it's two different bases, but there is something equal. I don't know, man, I, let's, let's put it this way. Do you agree that if I got four to the third power, if this is four to the third power, four times four times four is 16. Uh, four times four times four is 64. So four to the third power, four to the third power is four times four times four is 64. If I got eight right here, eight to the second power is also 64. So four to the three equals eight to the two. Okay, what are they equal to? 64. Four to the third is 64. Eight to the two is 64. Oh, that's it, that's capital A. All right. Well, if you exponentiate, if, if you, exp, you know, that's what it is. This whole thing is what it is. If you exponentiate an exponentiated quantity, you're multiplying exponents. Uh-huh, interesting. If you take the logarithm um, it's exactly what we're going to do here. Uh, this is A. Uh, exactly what I want to do here. Uh, X, what is X equal to? Is the logarithm of capital A, uh, forgive me, uh, the logarithm, the, lo the logarithm base A of capital A, is the logarithm base A of A to the X, the logarithm base A of A to the X, what is the exponent? base A of A having X as an exponent, X. So X is equal to the logarithm, small a, logarithm base B of big A. What about this one? Is the logarithm base B of big A The logarithm of the quantity b to the y, base b, what is the exponent, base b, of b having y as an exponent? How about y? y equals the logarithm, base b, of a. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, so if you got that, let's plug them in, the tops. Well, let's get something straight right off the bat, guys. B to this something and B to that something are equal. Why are they equal? If the bases are the same, base B to some power equals base B to some power. The powers got, if these two guys are equal, and the exponentiations are equal. If the bases are equal, the exponents have to be equal. What's x? Log a base a. Okay, let's see here. Log log a. X is log base small a of big A. 
logarithm of the base A to the base, logarithm base B of, of this guy, small a. And this guy is always log big A. Well, we just, I think we just did it. I mean, there's, there's, a, lot of, there's a lot of ways to do it. Um, but this, this kind of does it. I mean, you can find, um, you can write this a number of ways, actually. Let me just kind of. If you want to find the logarithm of a number at a particular base, but that base is hard to deal with, um, well, let me try to let me try to think here. Um, maybe it's the other way around. It might be easier this way. Take this guy. Solve this. Everything I'm saying here is correct, guys. I just want to kind of put it in the language. Let's divide by this second factor on each side. Uh, and of course. Divide by this second factor on each side. Yeah, this is a better way. It's good. This is true. This is math. This is mathematical reality right here, guys. This is mathematical reality right here. Um, but, you know, uh, it, it's mathematical reality, period. Uh, probably this is a better way to write it. Certainly, certainly this is mathematically true, but this is a, good, a better way to write it. Basically what you're doing is, Let's say I just don't have the resources or for some other mathematical confrontation that I'm facing. There's a, a mathematical problem. There's a mathematical confrontation being faced. This mathematical issue that I have is I do not easily deal with the base A for whatever reason. My calculator is not going to work good with it. I got to do something else. I don't know. Base A might be a really tough base to deal with. Uh, it is whatever. There's maybe a lot to do there. If I want to find the logarithm of a number, capital A, base small a, but base small a is kind of tough to deal with, then I'm going to find the logarithm of the number, capital A. In, you know, so if I want to find the logarithm of a number, capital A, to a base small a, which isn't necessarily an easy base to deal with, then I'll find the logarithm of that number, capital A, to a base b. I'll find the logarithm of that number, capital A, to a base b, which is an easier base to deal with, and I'll divide it by the logarithm of a to that same base b. And that's how you convert from uh, that, that's how you convert with the, ba with the bases. If I want to go from base B to base A, this is what I'm doing. There's other ways to prove what I just proved. You could almost argue that it's easier. I could also argue that you might lose people too, I think. I, I'd have to look at it a little more closely to, to get a good feeling for what's going on, you guys. But certainly if I'm given, if I know, if I'm comfortable dealing with base B, if I'm comfortable dealing with base, if I'm comfortable dealing with base small b, small b, small b, then the logarithm of capital A, the logarithm of capital A, base small a, is the logarithm of capital A, base small b, divided by the logarithm of small a, base small b. 
And that's that's how it goes. A lot of times in, in place of X right here, you can, in place of A right here, you can put an X. Might be easier. Once you got down to here, the A is not something really specific, you guys. You can put an X or a Y right there. Maybe it's easier to look at. Yeah. That's your business on that. Um, so we can utilize some of this stuff when we're doing some of the problems. Do as much as I can, you guys, to get through this for you and with you. Um, they talk about interest. They talk about money, uh, things that happen in business, the financial services industry, banking and stuff. You talk about interest rates. Pretty important thing. Um, So we got here. They're saying there, there's there's an easy way to do interest, and one of the, one of the easy way to do interest is there's, there's there's simple interest and compound interest. Simple interest is the amount of interest you get is your principal that you've invested times the rate at which you've invested it times the time. I equals PRT. It's that simple. So the amount you get. Your amount you get at the end of that is the original principal plus the interest. You know, which is the original amount is going to be original principal plus the interest, PRT. Sometimes you can write it like this. Well, there's some significance here, uh, how this all plays out. Uh, and that's just for simple interest. Well, that's pretty easy. I mean, you guys have seen this before, I am sure. You may not have seen it written exactly in this manner. Or you may have. I don't know. You, you may have, too. But simple interest is, I mean, you've probably seen this, and then maybe you've seen people take it this far, or they just stay here, or they don't really talk about it, you just add it. But the amount of interest you're going to get is the principal times the rate times the time. The rate is usually percentage. You've got to convert it to a decimal or a fraction. Percents are useful to visualize something, kind of useless to solve them, in a sense. you got to convert the percent to an equivalent decimal or fraction. Percent as an equivalent decimal or fraction, P, so principal, rate, time. The amount of principal that you've invested or that you took out. You might have taken a loan. you got to pay back the loan. The principal can work either way. So you took out the loan and they're making money off you, or you put money in the bank and you're making money off them. I equals PRT for simple interest. For compound interest, it's a little different dynamic. So let me just quickly show you that and kind of just, you know, we can kind of look at some of the stuff as we need to, as we need to. Um, like I said, if you're more comfortable at this point, you get to there, you throw an X in there. A is this, A is, you know, that, that'll work. That'll work. Uh, you kind of run, the, the letters are so redundant, you guys, you got to kind of, you got to play carefully. Uh, work, play the way it works for you, and then at the end, when it's all down there, you could, you know, I can, I can write this whole thing in Russian. I can write this whole thing in Greek. I can write this, you know, uh, I can use Greek letters. I can use whatever. As long as the mathematical relationships are consistently expressing the reality, you're fine. The language is not an issue. Language is not an issue.
Okay, well, I said what I said for the simple interest, you guys. Um, For compound interest, and that's a lot of what goes on in the financial services industry. Not always. Compound interest is different from the simple interest that I just described and just erased. You saw it. The compound interest depends how they're playing the game, you guys. They have got, they've got to agree on a time frame when they're doing this stuff. Um, the time frame is usually in years. Though it may, it may be, they may be talking about hours. They may be talking about days. They may be talking about months. Uh, but usually they talk about how many years. They kind of scale everything to years. So, A equals amount or final amount. P is initial investment. Initial amount, also known as principal. Okay? Initial amount, also known as principal. Uh, R equals rate. N equals the number. So P for principal or initial amount invested, amount, final, number of compoundings number of compoundings per year. T equals time. Usually in years, I can, again, I can, we can play this a whole bunch of ways, guys. They, they, may, they may have a different scheme. They may say, hey, look, man, it's a 30, let's make something up here. It's a 30-day duration investment. You are going to be compounded. It is going to be compounded 10 times a day. Well, your kind of pseudo year at that point is the month, the 30 days. Uh, and, you know, how many, you know, so how many, this is, so this is not kind of, it's not necessarily set in stone. Usually the rate is annual interest rate per year. If it's per year, it's the number of compoundings per year and it's number of years. They say to you, hey, I'm going to give it to you for 730 days. This investment is for 730 days. Well, let's not play games with leap years or anything like that. If I take 365 and double it, 365 doubled is 760. 730. Okay, I'm forgetting my math, guys. Uh, so if you take 365 days, which is a year, forget leap years and everything else. 365 days in a year, if you double 365, it is 730 days. So 730 days is how many years? Two years. So if they told me 730 days, please don't write 730 right here for time. It's 730 days, but they want it in years. They're telling you basically the amount, the final amount in there is the principal on the outside. One plus. Um, let me see exactly how we wrote that. Let me see how the, I'm going to try to look at that. It's R Number of compoundings, RT, the rate. For some reason, guys, I'm kind of drawing. I don't want, to, don't want to say anything too careless here. Right, 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 right. Okay, that's it. This is the rate per year. 
converted to a decimal or to a fraction. The rate per year divided by the number of times it's compounded per year. Why is it being made smaller? Because if I'm compounding 10 times per year, then you're only getting one. You're, if I'm compounding 10 times per year with equal time intervals between everybody, if it's 10 times per year, then every 10th of a year, you're getting the bonus of some sort of interest, giving you extra money. Yeah, but every 10th of a year is not a year. It's one tenth of a year. So I'm only getting one tenth the rate. I'm getting n divided into your, I'm getting one tenth. I'm getting one tenth of the rate that a year would give me. I'm getting one tenth of that rate. True. Um, how many times are you getting that? Well, I'm getting it over T years and N times of compounding every year. Do not do what some people do. Do not take the P here. Do not take the P here. Go into here. Don't go P times all this, get an answer, and then go to the NT. You're going to get something huge. I wish banks operated, operated like that, but they'd be, out of, they'd be out of money. They'd be out of business. There wouldn't be enough money for them to do something like that. What you got to do is you got to do this guy first. You got to go one plus R over N, get an answer, then take it to the NT power, right? And, and that's, that's essentially what's going on. And it's being compounded. Um, what happens is you're getting... You're getting some money, and then what happens is you're, they're, they're, you're, you're getting a little bit more because they're giving it back to you a little bit more and more and more. But you don't, the P stays out of the picture, guys. You go one plus R over N, get an answer, take it to the NT power, then multiply it with P. There's a reason that's true. The reason is, is you're going P, forget about the NT for a second. You're going, forget about the NT for a second. You're going P times one, which is P, plus a fractional portion of a yearly interest benefit. And then that's the new amount of money you have. Then you do that again for the new amount of money. So it's one plus R over N again times what you originally had. This guy just stays untouched and you're just multiplying thereon. So the P only gets written down twice but it gets accounted for in an additive fashion a lot of times. It gets accounted for in an additive fashion n times t number of times. It's a little on the odd side, but <laughs> believe it or not, this plays a big role. This plays a big similarity. For I'm not saying this right. There's a lot of similarity between this and the exponential function. Tremendous similarity. There's a lot going on that's very much the same. And if you take it to the limit, it is the same. Um, if you are, if you're instantaneously breaking this thing up, then it comes out to here. A is equal to P e to the RT. Pretty fascinating stuff. Crazy stuff. Uh, this is if, if, if the compounding is instantaneously happening. What does that mean? Well, that means there's very, very short intervals. If there's very, very short intervals, you're not getting a whole lot of interest. Yeah, I know, but I keep adding up all those very, very small amounts of interest over the, over the time frame that, that's going on here. Um, fascinating, fascinating stuff. Um, so this... This is more if it's discrete. I did this 10 times, 10 compoundings over 20 years. If the numbers are big enough, if n is big enough and the time is big enough, it does approximate this. It does approximate that. So there you go. I mean, that's... <clears throat> I'll talk more about this tomorrow. 
Talk more about this tomorrow, you guys, uh, and just just clean up the loose ends. I think we should be fine. I don't. I'm just. I'm trying to. The, very much the lion's share. Very much the lion's share of a lot of the basic algebra that you'll see in any basic algebra class, intermediate algebra class, and what and a lot of what you could use in a lot of places. I and mean, there's still more. Math is beautiful. It goes on and on. But a lot of the basic algebra that you can use in an algebra class and in other classes as well, the lion's share of that, lion's share of that we've covered here. We, we've covered a lot of that here. There's nothing really new beyond this. I guess when I, tied up, when I tie up some elements of the practice final exam, we'll try to look at some specific problems uh, from, uh, let's say, practice exam, old practice exam number three, and old practice exam review for the final. Some of that probably, but maybe some other places as well. There's not a whole, there's nothing really too much new beyond that. This has been gone through. You're going to look at it. You're going to look at it. If you have the time, look at it carefully. Always review it. Always back it up uh, on your screen and look at it again if you need to. And we'll throw some stuff on here. So I think you're doing pretty good. Okay. All right, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. I am going to take off and I'm going to find the gentleman that's kind enough to help me tape this. And we're going to shut this down edit it a little bit and we're going to be okay. All right. Thank you very much, guys.